So how do you install Kali Linux on any Android device? Hey, my name is WJ Pierce for CyberGrade, and today we're going to be looking at exactly how we do that. One thing I would like to mention before we get started, Kali Linux is an extremely powerful version of a Linux distribution, and it's meant for offensive security. So if you are going to be following along today doing this, please bear in mind that it is for education purposes only and use it responsibly. Thanks. OK, let's get started. OK, let's go. So there are a couple of things you're going to need before we start the tutorial. You're obviously going to need an Android device with at least 8 gigabytes of internal storage, and I recommend around 3 gigs of RAM. You're going to need two apps. One's called Termux and the other NetHunter Kex. NetHunter Kex is going to give you the GUI access to Kali, but I'm going to show you how to get those and configure them in this tutorial. Finally, you're going to need a list of commands, which I have linked in the description down below, so you can copy and paste them or just use them as a visual reference. Now there is an additional thing that I would recommend having, and that is a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard so you can interact with Kali. It does support touchscreen, but using the command line while you're kind of trying to use the touchscreen, it can get a bit fiddly. Okay, let's go. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna to wanna to navigate to the Google Play Store and download Termux. Termux is basically a way for us to interact with the Android tablet using the command line interface, and it's going to allow us to do things that we wouldn't usually be able to do just using the Android operating system. After that, we're going to need to open Google Chrome. And we're going to need to navigate to the URL at the top there. So it's store.nethunter.com. We're going to need to click download store app. And this is basically just a third party kind of application installer. It's a store specifically designed for things to work with Kali. So once we've got that Termux app and the NetHunter store, you want to open the NetHunter store and you'll be presented with this screen here. And it's basically a list of applications that you inst can install. You want to download NetHunter Kex and it should be about a third of the way down the screen. So again, now we have Termux and NetHunter Kex. We next want to configure Termux to work with our Android tablet. So we're going to need to type in Termux hyphen setup hyphen storage. And this is basically going to give Termux access to our Android's device. So this is going to pop up and you want to click allow. Next, we need to download wget. So we need to type in pkg install wget. So wget is a computer program that retrieves content from web servers. And this is what we're going to be using to download the NetHunter ISO. So this is going to pop up and you want to click Y for yes. So for this next command, I've actually got it saved to my clipboard so you didn't have to sit and watch me painfully type all the characters at the end there. But basically you're going to want to type wget, which is the program that we just installed, hyphen zero, install hyphen nethunter hyphen termux, and then just the URL there. Once that's downloaded, it's going to go through something that looks like this. And then we want to change the permissions on that file that we've just downloaded to make it an executable that's going to be used by everyone. So we want to type in schmod plus x and then that file, which is install hyphen nethunter hyphen termux. This is going to change the permission, as I said, and it's going to allow our user to execute it. And now we can see that the permission has been changed and it's highlighted in green. If you look over on the left, you'll see that we've got read, write, and execute access now. So now we need to type in full stop forward slash install hyphen nethunter hyphen termux. And this is basically now running the application. So not ermux, we want to type in termux. And hit enter. So this should pop up. Now this bit takes quite a while, so go get a cup of tea or something and just chill out. It's basically going to keep going, depending on your internet speed, depending on what kind of Android device you're using. So every time you see Y, basically want to hit yes. You might not see this. It's just asking me because I've actually got it installed already. So it's saying, do you want me to replace the current version? So we're back and hopefully it didn't take too long. It does depend on your internet speed. It's now going to extract the root FS and this does take up quite a lot of room on your Android device. So it's now going to present you with an option basically saying, do you want me to delete, delete the original rootfs now I've extracted it? So you don't have to, but I always click Y here. 
So that's it. That's Kali installed. Obviously, we're not connected to Kali right now, but that's pretty much it. So as you can see, it is relatively easy, to be honest. So to get that command line interface, what we're going to want to do is enter one of the options above. And the option that we're going to go into is NetHunter, and that's going to connect us to a local host session. We're not going to be connected as root, but we are going to be connected as a pre-configured user that Kali comes with. So as you can see, I'm the user Kali, and I'm connected as local host. And you can see I've got full command line access, which is pretty cool. So next, we're going to want that graphical user interface, which is going to be really super like kind of beginner friendly. So what we're going to want to type is kex pass wd. And this is going to prompt us to create a password. So as long as it's six characters long, you can make it whatever you want. So this is pretty much the last stage that we're going to need to go through. And we're going to need to check the port number of Kex. So we do that by typing in Kex and pressing enter. It's then going to give us the RFB port number, which is 5901. You might have a slightly different one. So if you take a note of that, Come back to your desktop and open up the NetHunter Kex. Now this is connection failed because that's an old session I had. You can name it whatever you want. I just keep it NetHunter Kex. In the VNC connection settings, you make sure it's localhost. And on the right hand side, you put port 5901. Hit connect. And there you go, guys. That's Kali running on an Android device, which I think is pretty cool. So something I like to do as soon as I'm connected is come over to settings. Hit display settings and for the tablet that I'm using the resolution that works best is the 1280 by 800 one so you can see if I hit apply it makes everything a little bit easier to read not as high res but a little bit easier to read so now if I open up a terminal you can see that we're connected I'll just type a basic Linux command and there you go type you name you can see that you're logged in as the user Linux that's pretty much it now to stop it we want to come back to termux and we want to type kex stop and that kills the process we can then type exit and that comes out of Kali we can then close termux by dragging down from the top clicking termux and clicking exit And if you want to jump back into it, you just open up your Termux session again, or a new session even so. Type in NetHunter to bring us back to that original Kali host. Type in Kex start. Type in Kex, get the process, um, sorry, get the port number, which is probably the same. Come back to Kex, acknowledge, and then press connect, and you're back in. So thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found it useful and interesting as well. If you feel like subscribing, that'd be really cool. And if you want to leave a comment, it really helps me know that what I'm doing is, is actually useful for you guys. I find it really encouraging getting people's feedback because I make these videos for fun and to help others get a leg up in cybersecurity. So again, 